Hi, welcome to your astrology forecast for the weekdays of April 7th through April 10th, 2014. And I apologize for being a bit late on this video. I was busy this weekend with uh, Mind Body Spirit Expo, or maybe it's called Body Mind Spirit Expo, actually. But for some reason, I always feel like it rolls off the tongue easier the other way. Anyway, it's not important. Uh, <laughs> okay, so today... On April 7th, 2014, the moon in Cancer squares the sun in Aries, so it's the quarter moon happening right now. This is definitely activating the square, the grand cross that's really coming up. It's not exact yet, but it's really activating some of the stuff going on right now. So the moon in Cancer squaring the sun in Aries may cause tensions in regards to um, our emotions and uh, where we've been kind of moving forward with what we've been wanting to do. Uh, perhaps we have uh, been really going forth uh, fearlessly and we may need to kind of go back within ourselves a little bit more. And, or it could even be that family is uh, kind of feeling uh, somewhat neglected and there may be a little bit of tensions that arise between yourself and your family because it may be time to kind of nurture your family a little more and nurture your own emotions and kind of go within on your foundation a little more but ultimately there will be uh some tensions that arise but you will be able to perhaps overcome them by going within a little more then the moon in cancer squares mars and libra so this is kind of similar in some sense. Mars and Libra is more focused on relationships and uh, there could be certain emotions that have been uh, brewing under the surface and the Mars and Libra may have not confronted, especially since it's retrograde, it may have not have confronted these issues, these emotional issues within relationships. And now that the moon in Cancer is squaring, it's kind of creating tensions there. So you may have to confront some uh, emotional uh, undercurrents that you just didn't deal with right away. So that will come up probably and you will be able to overcome it if you are straightforward with how you're feeling. And it may be kind of difficult understanding how you are feeling because um, squares are kind of uh, more difficult so there is kind of needs to be some kind of awareness that occurs to really be able to uh, bring the more integrative uh, stuff together. Or it could even be that uh, emotions revolving around home and family come up in a relationship where you kind of have an argument about it or something and have to confront that as well. Then Mercury enters Aries. So this will help us to uh, face things head on and be able to communicate things a lot easier and express ourselves a lot easier. The only thing we do need to watch out for, though, is being overly blunt when we're being, you know, truthful. The truth may come out a little harsh, um, but as long as we, you know, are weary of that, remained, uh, you know, conscious of that, and kind of be more tactful about how you say things, then it should be okay, and it'll be easier to kind of confront issues that need to be talked about. And it could even be easier to write and express yourself through writing, and it's actually a great idea to exercise whenever there's planets in Aries, or if there's really strong Mars energy going on, it's always important to exercise because you're going to have a lot more energy. And yeah, and even in conversations, you could have like more uh, lively debates going on or uh, lively conversations, things that are much more energetically, uh, you know, abundant, I guess. And then the moon and Cancer trines Saturn and Scorpio. So this could kind of bring up responsibilities to family, but it, it should be uh, sort of a, more of an easygoing energy and it'll be easier to be there for your family and focus on your family a little more, or even focus on your deeper emotions and focus on any subconscious emotions and transform those into something lighter, uh, letting go of maybe um, tendencies that are less than ideal and uh, kind of refining how you are feeling and being true to your own feelings as well. And also it may be easier to take care of responsibilities in the home. 
on this day. And then it's a good day to take care of responsibilities in the home. And it's easier to concentrate too uh, when it comes to that stuff. Then the moon in Cancer, T squares the south and north nodes, the south node in Aries and the north node in Libra. So fronting emotions around whether you've been taking care of yourself more or taking care of another more and whether the balance has been there or not. So it'll, it's attempting to show you what needs to come into balance in terms of relationships, whether you've been taking care of yourself too much or another too much. So uh, it'll kind of keep you in check on that. And it could even bring up uh, family matters too, where maybe um, you need to, you know, take care of your family a little more instead of, you know, yourself or being too focused in a relationship or something like that, you may actually need to focus your energies more on home and family too. Um, and then, and you know, of course it always depends on like what you have been focusing on more. And if you've been focusing on one thing too much, then it may be time to uh, bring a balance to those other areas. And on April 8th, the moon in loop moves into Leo. So this is a great creative energy and, uh, you could have a lot more fun on this day, and if you have children, it's a great day to uh, hang out with them and nurture them. And you could even find romance on this day if you're single, or have a more of a sense of romance within a relationship, and even a little flair for the dramatic. And the moon trines Mercury in Aries, moon in Leo, of course. So it's a lot easier to express your emotions, and you may be... If uh, especially expressive uh, and be able to express your emotions in a more romantic way or dramatic way and this is something where you do want to watch out a little bit of uh, over dramatization of your emotions and maybe overly harsh words in the communication but overall it'll be like extra boost of energy and extra uh, ability to communicate those emotions so yeah and then the sun in aries opposes mars and libra which is moving backwards so they like go you know past each other by almost but they do connect for a second the sun in aries is all about self and self-expression and being yourself and being an individual and all that fun stuff it can also bring a boost of energy to your sense of well-being it is spring, so oh, well, in the U.S. it's spring. I suppose it's kind of wintery or fall, probably, or something over there, huh? Yeah, or over in other parts of the world, um, in like Australia or something. I think it's like that. Uh, not that I'm very well versed on that, anyway. Um, besides the point, uh, so the sun in Aries will bring a boost of energy to yourself. So it's extremely important to exercise, and I think I've already mentioned that. Anyways, opposing Mars and Libra. This uh, is going to be like, a, you know, a self versus relationship kind of thing. Mars and Libra is having us be a bit more assertive in our relationships and able to really uh, assert our uh, boundaries in our relationships. But it is retrograde. So the problem with that is we can sometimes become sort of passive aggressive about things or actually internalize some feelings and maybe some people have been a little more selfish than usual and others have been a little bit more diplomatic than usual. So there's kind of a pulling kind of effect going on and a need for balance and a need for, um, you know, if you've been overly... Uh, selfish or self-centered, then you want to think about the other person's feelings. If the if you've been uh, letting things slide too much, then you may want to assert yourself and explain, you know, how you're feeling in your relationship and be like, hey, I need more time with you or whatever. All right, and then April 9th, the moon in Leo trines Uranus and Aries. So... Uh, using our emotions for creativity can help bring insights into yourself. So uh, working creatively can actually help you to really get in touch with your emotions too. And then uh, it could also bring insights to others possibly. So this could also bring a more... Uh, 
shocking type of energy too and also unexpected things occurring and you could even come across someone more unconventional uh, or a romantic interest who's more unconventional from the usual type you might have or you could uh, learn something shocking about either your children or about a romantic partner or uh, the creative project you do could be somewhat shocking to other people and I may have mentioned that but yeah there could be some major insights that come to you as well all right Chiron and Pisces sextiles Pluto and Capricorn and then they both in conjunct the moon and Leo so Chiron in Pisces is the wounded healer and it's all about uh, dissolving away the old wounds and sharing your experience so that others can be healed from that same issue. And then sextiling Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn is all about unearthing any darkness and transforming it into something lighter. And it's in the sign that rules the 10th house. So of home and career, or not home sorry uh career and public standing and uh, authority figures so uh there could be issues related to um you know what what ambitions you have or the career you're in and you may need to transform something within that so there's a lot of healing taking place in you know what how we feel uh we you know our status in the world is so kind of uh, healing that stuff and then they're in conjuncting the moon and Leo so we're able to really express these feelings and these things that we're dealing with these things that we're healing from through something very creative dramatic and maybe even uh, something where uh, we can help children with these things or we can even just share it publicly in a public way um, that can help heal the collective <sighs> and then the moon in Leo sextiles Mars and Libra so this gives a lot of creative energy a lot of ability to really uh, put into like some of the more creative energy into romance and have um, more fun in romance and love and in your relationships and if you are single then this is uh, very good time to pursue somebody potentially as a romantic interest though mars is retrograde so you may want to wait until it turns direct probably because um well you know it's hard to say actually but it's going to turn direct on may 19th just so you guys know <laughs> so Anyway, um, th there could be kind of a healthy competition that occurs in romance, and it's a great idea to do active things if you are in a relationship, and it just would be a lot of fun to do active things even, and do something maybe a little more competitive. And then the moon trines the sun in Aries, <laughs> so we can really express ourselves way awesomely on this day, and express how we're feeling and be able to have fun with how we're feeling and have fun in expressing ourselves and it's also a great day for uh allowing your your children to do some creative self-expression as well romance is also great on this day as well because moon and leo just brings all of that fun stuff going on then the moon and leo squares saturn and scorpio and this kind of puts the weight of resp responsibility again upon us and we may need uh to you know maybe a sense of responsibility towards our children or towards even a creative project maybe kind of a weight that we need to you know take care of something in or even in our relationships and it would be something that's kind of like subconsciously comes upon us or maybe even a subconscious fear about those things that kind of comes upon us that kind of creates a tension that we need to you know take care of something like oh man all of a sudden we just feel like kind of anxious and need to like oh i gotta take care of this <laughs> so that could kind of happen and that's towards the end of the day on april 9th and then on april 10th the moon in leo trines the south node in aries and sextiles the north node in libra so this is actually great because 
Uh, it'll be easier to be ourselves within our romances, and our that ability to be yourself in your romance will help to um, bring more energy to the relationship. And uh, things should really flow really smoothly and uh, be able to um, really put a lot of energy into your relationships. And then the moon enters Virgo. So then our, uh, our emotional well-being will be very tied to um, our daily responsibilities and it's, you know, it'll, it's a good day for focusing on getting uh, our responsibilities taken care of and it's extremely important to uh, take care of your body as well. Um, Virgo represents health and so our emotional well-being will be very connected to uh, what we eat on that day and how much we get done. Though uh, it should be a lot easier to have more of a focus around uh, focusing on the details and uh, organizing things and uh, doing your work and even taking care of your pets will be easier and you may enjoy hanging out with your pets a little bit on that day too. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and like and comment and share. <laughs> All right, uh, have an awesome week, and I will be back with the weekend horoscope on the near the near the weekend. <laughs> All right, bye.